We're going to pretend it is five tips. Quality learning experiences for every student, every day, without exception. You guys have any questions? A mission statement school administrators say is not being met. Prompting me to say we need to take a look at more efficient use of our facilities. And so begins a major shakeup within Northeast Oklahoma's largest school district. Show me how it's done. 41,000 students attend Tulsa Public Schools each day. <laughs> the same enrollment as 1952, but that's about the only similarity. In 1952, we had 56 facilities. Today, we have 90. Facilities. Meet Jim McCarthy, a private consultant brought in by TPS, paid by community donors to figure out what works and what doesn't in the district. We are looking to create the new face of education, not recreate the old face. How will this be done? We'll look at every school and stack it up against every other school. McCarthy and a committee of educators are charged with gathering ideas. Judy Fury is one of those people. You're looking at uh, grade configurations, you're looking at programs, uh, needs of the community, services. As principal at Kendall Whittier, a product of consolidation in 1997, Fury understands the importance. At some point in time, schools become so small that they really can't offer everything a child needs. The district is currently in the process of holding a community forum at each of the nine high schools to gather ideas and listen to concerns. I'm really not for sure what is going on. Carolyn Ingram's granddaughter attends Central High School. It's something new. It could be good or it could be bad. And that's exactly what the committee has found while researching other large districts who have done similar restructuring. Last May, the Kansas City, Missouri School District closed more than half of its buildings, cutting $71 million from the operating budget. Did it work? Kansas City school officials say yes. TPS wasn't impressed. Some were very unsuccessful, and we want to learn from them also so that we don't make those same mistakes. Others were very successful. Pittsburgh did an excellent job, and we have spent quite a bit of time with them. In 2006, Pittsburgh Public Schools approved a major consolidation plan. After months of community input, the district closed 22 elementary and middle schools. They did close a lot of yeah. schools. Is that something that could happen it, here? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that could happen, that, that we would combine uh, facilities. You're going to lay these face down. Other ideas include reconfiguring grades, possibly opening centers, for sixth or seventh graders. College prep is also a hot topic. Tulsa Community College and Tulsa Technology Center are interested. There are just a lot of different possibilities that are floating around out there, a lot of different partnerships um, that are really opening up. Only, I don't even know what to write. With consolidation comes cost savings. However, school officials say this is not the primary goal of the restructuring plan. Will we save money because of this? Yes. What would I like to do uh, with that money? I'd like to return every penny of it to the classroom. Will I be able to do that? I don't know. Dr. Ballard says he's not holding back information. He truly does not know what the future holds. The committee will gather all community recommendations by the end of March. The public will then be presented with the final plan, and the board is expected to take action in April. For parents, students who are concerned, who are a little iffy about the whole idea, what would you say to them? I would say to them, know that this is all about doing the right thing for students and everyone who is asked to move to a new location will be trading up to greater educational opportunities. This is a story we will continue to follow. If you have questions, comments, or ideas you'd like to share with the committee, we put a link on our website. You'll find this story at kjrh.com under segment two.